For someone who hates Comic-Con crowds, Jesse Eisenberg sure seems to be making a lot of fanboy-friendly movies. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of American Ultra. I just killed two people. <laughs> That's awesome. They had guns and knives and they were being like total dicks. Did you call the cops? No, I didn't call the police because I have like a lot of weed and like mushrooms in my car. <gasps> How did this happen? I don't know, but I'm like freaking out all over the place, babe. I have a lot of anxiety about this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Drop it! Killed two operatives with a spoon, sir. A spoon? What? We're terminating us at hell. Why are there men in hazmat suits? Thanks to your actions, two CIA assets are dead. Did you hang up on me? Please tell me you did not just hang up on me. Hmm, money and fame or artistic integrity? That seems to be the question that plagues many actors these days. And while actors like Michael Fassbender and Mia Wasikowska, Eisenberg's girlfriend by the way, seem to be able to manage such a balancing act, Eisenberg himself seems tormented by it. He initially made a name for himself in the industry with smaller indie films like Roger Dodger, The Squid and the Whale, and The Education of Charlie Banks. But with his success there, the bigger pictures came calling. Zombieland, The Social Network, Now You See Me, The Rio Movies. And through it all, Eisenberg's unique personality surely gave his publicist a migraine. He admitted with some disdain that he doesn't actually watch movies himself. He compared one journalist to Carrot Top and made her cry. And then of course his most recent and most infamous comment, likening Comic-Con to genocide after attending the event to promote yet another blockbuster film, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Luckily for him and Warner Brothers, that one's an ensemble cast. And so's Now You See Me Too. But American Ultra? That largely hinges on Eisenberg, and it will be interesting to see if the fanboy audience, which this movie caters to, can get over that comment so soon after it was made. But interestingly, Eisenberg isn't the only offensive person associated with this movie. Kristen Stewart still has her detractors, both for her professional and personal actions. Yet she did just win the French equivalent of an Academy Award for her supporting role in Clouds of Sils Maria. That film featured a possible romance between Stewart's character and Juliette Binoche's, and in real life, Stewart has recently made headlines for dating a woman herself. Whether or not that will hurt her popularity with her Twilight fan base is also a question that American Ultra producers are surely pondering. Furthermore, American Ultra is written by Max Landis, the son of director John Landis, who infamously directed Twilight Zone, where negligence led to three horrific onset deaths. Max broke into the biz with Chronicle, and he has a big year in 2015 with American Ultra and then Victor Frankenstein in November. But despite those high-profile releases, he surely didn't do himself any favors when he tastelessly added fuel to the Fantastic Four drama by tweeting out the first few pages of the script he'd submitted for the project a few years ago. We often debate on this channel if off-screen actions should affect how audiences feel about what they see on screen, and American Ultra seems like a perfect test case for that, assuming of course that it is a good movie. Jesse Eisenberg is so utterly charming in this movie, so skilled, that I think it puts him in Tom Cruise territory. And by that I mean actors that are super weird and off-putting in their personal life, yet just so darn professional when it comes to their work, you can't help but admire them and overlook all that weird personal stuff. And boy, is Jesse Eisenberg good here. He is so funny, like laugh out loud funny. He is very good at executing the unfortunately few action sequences he is given. More on that in a moment. But also he gives his Mike Howell this undercurrent of menace, which is just mesmerizing. And watching him here, it made me realize that maybe he is very well cast as Lex Luthor. And what's tripping him up, at least so far in the trailer, are choices made by those behind the camera, the producer, the director, the writer, and that Jesse Eisenberg is being hindered by those choices. He's not being allowed to play Lex Luthor as he clearly can. And if that's the case, that would mean that Batman v Superman is letting him down and it's letting us down. And it would be the second movie to do so because American Ultra is guilty of the same thing. I mean, the trailer and the movie itself keep teasing us with this idea of a stoner super soldier. And you keep waiting to see him in action. But I have to say, 
you never do. I mean, even at the very end of the movie, when you're like, okay, I've been patient, I've waited, let's go. They cut to an, uh, an animated sequence at the very end, uh, a tangential one. And I guess they're hoping, because there is action in the, anima in the animated sequence that it'll scratch your action itch, but I can tell you, as a viewer, it did not. Uh, so I guess I would say that American Ultra is all idea and no execution, which is why the first third of the movie is the best. And I have to say, I'm getting really tired of going to see movies, and Fantastic Four is guilty of this as well, that are basically auditioning to be franchises. I mean, I'm being asked to sit in, uh, in on pitch meetings and development meetings uh, at the big Hollywood studios, but I'm being asked to pay to do so, right? I mean, if you're going to just test the waters, uh, give me a half-price ticket. If I'm paying full price to go and see a movie, I expect one that's not half-baked. I expect a fully baked movie, even again if my protagonist is, uh, is baked as well. So that was a, a big frustration for me. Although I have to say, to be fair, I would like to see a sequel to this movie because it shows so much promise. Not just with Jesse Eisenberg, uh, and I can totally see why he wanted to play this character. I think it must have been so much fun for him and so rewarding to successfully pull it off. But uh, more rewarding for him uh, to, to portray the character than unfortunately for us to watch the character. Uh, but even beyond Jesse Eisenberg's performance, and everybody in the film does a good job by the way. Even Kristen Stewart, everyone does a good job. I'll, I'll, I'll circle back to her in a moment. Uh, but there are great moments in the film in terms of the script, even though the script is guilty of not escalating the situation as it should. But there is one monologue, for instance, about a tree. I don't want to give anything else away about it, which was so incredibly powerful, not just the first time, but later on when they circle back, when they circle back to it. I was just blown away by some of the emotional and intellectual aspects of this movie, which made it even more frustrating. They just needed the action. And I think that fault again stems from not just the screenwriter, uh, Max Landis, but also your director here, who clearly doesn't know how to work with a small budget. Although just when it comes to action, I really admired the film's CIA sequences because they were able to um, take their small budget and turn it into a plus because it made you feel that this is what it was actually like to work for the CIA, what it's actually like to work for a government agency in real life as opposed to the glossy versions that we always see on the big and small screen. So I thought that was charming. And again, the movie definitely had its moments, uh, but after the first third, it got a little boring. I will say, though, I also admired its ability to deliver exposition. Again, particularly in the first third, they were able to sow certain seeds and hit at, hint at certain elements of the story uh, in a very masterful and subtle way, which, again, were subtle, but you still totally saw them. You know, they didn't go under the radar or over your head. So I, I was really impressed with that. Uh, also, the last thing that I want to add uh, is about Kristen Stewart and Jesse Eisenberg. I thought they made a really fun couple here, and I wanted to see more from them. But I also couldn't help but think, as the movie progressed, and again, as it failed to really go anywhere, uh, that uh, criminal couples like this, which have been a staple since, like, Bonnie and Clyde, are going to get, and Mickey and Mallory, I guess these are the most famous ones, but they're going to get totally blown off the silver screen when Jared Leto and Margot Robbie's uh, Joker and Harley Quinn show up. And th that was a big problem with this movie as well. When you know it's coming down the pipeline, this one, it just doesn't have enough juice to, to, to get out of, to compete, uh, and it has to just get out of the way. So that's my review of American Ultra. Uh, I think it's much more of a rental than a, something that you, that's worth paying to see full price for. Uh, again, because it's not fully formed. Uh, but there was a lot to like here. And Jesse Eisenberg, wow. If you're a Jesse Eisenberg fan, or if you're curious as to how he might do in Batman v Superman, do yourself a favor and see this movie. And I hope all casting directors and producers see it uh, and utilize him correctly going forward because he's just, he's a fantastic actor. And if he could eventually reach Tom Cruise levels, that would be something spectacular indeed. But I think he can do it. All right, so again, that's my review of American Ultra. I look forward to discussing the film with you down below. And you can check out some other episodes right now.